drive another city vehicle in your life because I will press charges that you did a hit and run. You need to pull over and call your sergeant. He looking at me like, is she really for real? Yes, I'm for real. Because I'm going to call the police. I called my father-in-law and I said, hey, one of your guys, because my, my ex-father-in-law is a senior uh, supervisor for this youth, for DPT. Somebody just hit me. One of your guys. What's his badge number? I said he wouldn't give it to me. I asked him already. Who? What's your sergeant name? What's your badge? Wouldn't give it to me. Okay. Okay, so ask him again, Lisa. What's your badge number? He shake his head. I said he just shook his head no. I said okay. He said call the police. I called the police. I got hit at 11.15. I waited until 12.30 before the police showed up. I talked to my ex-husband, Daniel. I asked him, are you at work? Who's the supervisor? He gives me two supervisors' name. The supervisor shows up in the little car. I describe him. Daniel tells me what the guy's name is. Guy walks up, hey, ma'am, are you okay? I said, how you doing today, Walter? His face drops. I know you? I said, no, but you're going to know who I am when I get through talking to you. I said, do you know Officer 3 Paul 141? Yeah. I said, well, I'm his daughter-in-law, and I have all <laughs> his grandchildren, and your guy just hit me. So I want to share something. Those that were with this Bible study the night before, we prayed for somebody. There was a deliverance. This person got rid of some demonic strongholds. The next day, I got attacked. However, let's look at this. This guy was going up the hill at least going 25 miles an hour. I'm walking. So that's almost like hitting somebody standing still. Because I'm not walking fast. I should have been in the hospital. But because I was saying, Jesus, 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 he planted me on top of his window. And a few minor sprains and bruises and spasms and, you know. But I should be in somebody's hospital. The enemy ain't no joke. He don't like us. But the Lord said, I got you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to protect you. So you need to understand whatever you're going through right now, God is about to take you to another level. And that when you go to another level, you start dealing with new devils. There's an old saying, new levels, new devils. And that is no joke. Amen. Like the army. There's you know, a private, a, a captain, a sergeant, I don't know the rankings. However, when you're a baby Christian, you're dealing with the privates. When you get up in ministry, you start dealing with the generals and the whatever else is. I don't know, what, like I said, I don't know what the, the lieutenants, the generals, the captains, whatever. Okay? So, you need to know today, are you going to walk out of here same way you walked in, with the same outlook, the same <coughs> thoughts, the same actions, the same reactions? Or will you allow yourself to leave here with a new lease on life? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and to teach you? Or are you going to go unchanged, untouched, continue to walk in your sin and allowing your flesh to keep leading you? See, the scripture is saying serving as overseers willingly and not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. See, Jesus, I want to tell you something. Jesus trusts you. Yeah, he trusts you, all of you. And he said before the foundations of this earth that he knew you. I want to use him to shepherd my flock. See, we don't look at it like that. Jesus said, I want to use y'all to shepherd my flock. But we looking at each other like, I ain't no pastor. If you got a 
little sister, a little brother, a cousin, a niece, a nephew, a kid. God is using you to shepherd that child, that person, your friend. We all are ministers in one way or another, either in a good influence or a bad influence. And I was good at being a bad influence. I see the fruit from my kids, different people I used to be with, hang with, okay? But then the Lord said, no, you need to reel this thing in. I got different plans for you. And I'm going to use you on a bigger scale. You thought you was influencing some people. I'm about to really influence you to be an influence. Amen? See, a pastor's duty is threefold. To feed the flock by preaching the true word of God. And a pastor must take the oversight. They are exhorted to do the office of bishops by personal care and vigilance over all the flock committed to their charge. And the third, you must be examples to the flock. Practicing holiness, self-denial, mortification, all other Christian duties because you must do them. You can't shortchange. I can't say, well, I'm going to pray, but I'm going to still drink. You, you got to do all of them because you want to do them. Not because somebody is making me do them. I want to do them. Okay? I truly have a heart to want to serve God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, three says... Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. See, there's a lot of pastors and preachers that abuse their authority. You can't wear this. You can't do that. You gotta, and so they got so religified that now the church is church hurt. They don't want to be there no more. Okay? They, they, they were under a tyrant. There was somebody that was entrusted to them, and they basically wanted to rule them and run them instead of love on them and encourage them you gonna do it my way you don't you don't come to bible study every, every I, I, i'm not gonna talk to you for three weeks oh you didn't show up when we did the outreach i ain't got nothing to say to you people get funny okay so the lord is saying that he don't want uh, you to rule his people with guilt, with fear, with imposing unscriptural uh, human tactics to manipulating people into doing what you want, okay, and not what God wants. And people do that. They make you want to do what they want you to do and not what God is telling them to tell you to do. Amen. Four says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Submit to God, resist the devil. Likewise, you younger people, submit to yourselves, to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. I need you, men and women of God, to understand that you have been redeemed by God, the great shepherd. You are a peculiar people. You don't fit in with everybody else. People really don't like you. They tolerate you, but they don't like you. They're always jealous of you, or they're always, you know, talking about you, or come on now, do I got a witness in here? Like there's something about you that you've always felt like, dang, I really don't fit in. I'm, I'm, I'm not part of this, right? And the enemy wants to expound on that and make you really not fit in. But God said you're a peculiar people. You've been handpicked amongst the commoners, the multitude of people. And I have now special favor over your life to complete a special service. See, the word of God is never restricted just to the ministers but also to the flock. And there's a need to treat God's flock as his heritage. And this is where we mess up. Because see, we'll honor the pastors and the leaders and the deacons, but when it comes to the flock, they seem to get left out. Yes? That's not the right way. Treat them with love, 
meekness, tenderness, sincerity. And then when the chief shepherd returns, you too will receive the crown of glory. Hallelujah. This crown of glory ain't just for me. This crown of glory got every one of y'all names on it. Okay? And we all must be reminded that Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, is the name above all names. And everyone who acts as an ambassador has a duty to set an example for Christ. Now, Peter fully explains the duties of a pastor, okay? And he gave very detailed instructions for them to follow. Now, this next part about submitting yourselves uh, uh, to God and resisting the devil, okay? He's given you instruction to submit to your elders and be submissive to one another. Clothe yourself with humility. Don't nobody want to be wrong. Don't nobody want to have the last word. Don't nobody want to let somebody else get to shine. I want to look good. See, God says, I will make your enemies your footstool. You can sit back and don't do nothing. And God will say, I'm exalting you while they think they're beating you. While they think they're making you look bad, I got you up here. And when this is all said and done, you're going to be the superstar. And they're going to be the ones looking silly. It's a season to adopt right now that you will carry this at all times. I'm going to walk out of here today and remember what pastor said. I'm going to keep me a teachable spirit. Every situation I deal with, I'm going to look at it. Now, why did that happen? Did I handle it right? Would God have wanted me to do it that way? Or could I have done it a different way? Okay? And the Holy Spirit can and will use the righteous. He has already bought and paid for you. And then, to whom he entrusts you to cover, he's going to give you the tenacity, the wisdom, the knowledge to minister to you, to pray for you, okay? Or pray for someone else. And you should be given respect at all times, submitting to the position. If God sends you somebody in your life that is praying for you, you need to respect that person. You may not like what comes out of their mouth at all times. Because trust and believe, I don't have people tell me, I heard you, but I, had, I don't receive that. I'm like, I don't care. That's what God told me to tell you. So that's between you and him now. I done did my blood's off my hands. And guess what? Two weeks later, can you pray for me? What happened now? Ooh, all hell done broke loose. Really? Because you didn't listen to God when he gave you that first word. See, and sometimes we don't learn until we keep getting hit upside the head. But you need to understand, if God sent somebody in your household to pray for you, uh, you need to respect them. You need to submit to their position in your life. And you need to understand it's only for your benefit. So obey those who are sent in your life. Okay, if you know that they truly a man or woman of God and they truly trying to keep you on the straight and narrow, you may not like it, but respect it. See, Satan is trying to tear relationships apart. He's going to have you questioning who do they think they are. God resists the proud. And it, it takes a while for you to learn that one. But we can learn a lot on that. Most of us operate in our own personal pride. Me, 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 me. I don't care about you. What about me? Right? What happens when you start focusing on me and you start looking at others and doing for others? Look how fabulous I am. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I did that. I got this. I don't need nobody. I can do it all by myself. You just let the enemy creep in. Because God is saying, you can't do it by yourself. You need help. We got to learn that scripture is teaching. And the scripture is teaching us right now that God gives grace to the humble and 
humility is a major key in growing up in Christ. See, those who walk in humility, God